Dominica say yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> very very soon and of course our beautiful prophetess Leslie Osei also here with us yes. All the way from KFT, you are welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you. All right. So when a lot of people see you, they, they, they'll call you our social media. Um, <laughs> there's a way they call um, very popular preachers. I've forgotten the name, but they call them celebrity preachers. Oh, really? Yes. Because <laughs> so it looks like everybody knows you. Wow. Yes. The power of social media. I mean, your ministry have really made me understand that this tool is, is very important. Mm -hmm. It's very effective. You know, and the need for us as children of God to capture that side of media yes. is, is really important. You're welcome. Thank you. Let me say ladies first. So let me go to um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> prophetess. I know that everybody refers to you as prophetess or say. Yeah. So the or say covers it up a little bit. But we want to know if before the or say, what was, was the last name? It was Boati. Oh, so you're Ghanaian? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that enough, no, to find out. no one ever knows that. <laughs> okay. All right. So if I may ask, did you grow up in Ghana, two of you? I was born and raised in America, but okay. then I came to Ghana when I was one and I left when I was five and I've been going every, every year. So Ooh. I read, write, and can speak tree fluently. Really? Yeah. <laughs> as, as for um, um, Apostle, yeah, it's, yes. it's obvious that he's, he's one here. of us. <laughs> born so you were born and raised here. Yes. Oh, great, great. Went to school here, um, mm. left when I around maybe 14 to the US. And then, oh, okay, so you also left quite early. Yes, mm -hmm. very early. Nice. Yeah. All right, I think. School in Kumasi, Alma Mater, what's the name of your school? I went to uh, the Apostolic Church. Uh, they had a school called Apostolic Golden Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where I went for primary. And then uh, I went to St. Joseph's in that Swami area. Okay. Yeah. Wow, and so then, you're a real estate crew. Yes. <laughs> yes. Prophetess, um, I, from what you just said, I don't think you even got a chance to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I went to a school in Roman Hill, but I did not get to school, you know, okay. most of my education is in America. So when you say Roman Hill, it's in Kumasi or Accra? In Kumasi. Oh, oh so yes. you're all from Kumasi? Yes, Kumasi. Nice. Yes. Okay. So I believe for the first time you guys met, the connection was there, or it's... Let me, let, let me just ask, let me just go uh, to the point. <laughs> <laughs> How did the two of you meet? <laughs> Well, um, it's a world win of a story, but yes. you can tell that. Let me, let me tell my side of the story. Okay. The so, two minute um, version. Two minutes, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, I was friends with, with, his, with her brother. Mm. And so growing up, we used to come around. And one day I was, I came to visit and we went for bike riding and we came to the house. And that was the first time I saw her. She was young. Uh, I was young as well. but. The moment I saw her, my spirit, something clicked in my spirit. Because up to now, I still remember that moment. How old were you back then? Um, I can say maybe 16 or so. Okay. So there wasn't, okay. well, I wasn't even thinking about relationship yes, or anything. Yes. It was just, I knew that something has taken place. Mm -hmm. And then we left it, you know. Um, and time went on, I went to college. And one day I came home and I went to a party and there go, this beautiful lady growing up <laughs> and so I decided to try to talk to her at that time and I didn't know that she she was not in college yet so I was asking mm -hmm. for her screen name and those days uh, you have to be in college to be on Facebook and oh she, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes and she wasn't in, in college so she couldn't she did she was trying to give me a hard time mm -hmm. um, but everybody that was there that there was a couple of friends around her and I was communicating with her but they can tell that something was happening mm -hmm. so they kind of left us alone they left me <laughs> and then I spoke to her and then she didn't give me her information but I went I went back to school and then one day I looked on Facebook and I saw her on Facebook so nice. I reached out to her and then we start you know we start communicating through instant messages mm -hmm. and stuff like that and from there, you know, we started developing the relationship. I would call her sometimes, and then we would talk. I would call her to pray for me because I used to play basketball in school, oh, wow. in college. So when we, go, when we have games, I would speak to her, listen, I would need you to pray for us, for us to win, and she would pray, and then <laughs> we, would, we would win. And uh, I kind of liked her spirituality in those days. And it was, she was all the way in Buffalo, which is about six hours from where I was living. So. Mm. It was never a physical relationship. It was all more communicating online. And then um, as time was going on, I was showing more interest in her, but she was still you know, trying to figure her life out. Right. And you know, I got to a point, I graduated, I wanted to settle because I was in ministry. I mm. felt like you know, this is a time to really 
get married, and most young guys think that way, like get married so you can do ministry. Ministry, yeah. And then that's what the enemy also presented me. Mm. A decoy. With right? another choice. With another choice. Because <laughs> you were playing hard to get, like, what do you want him to do? <laughs> you know, this is the two minutes version. I'm going to in detail. I know. Now. I'm sure probably, uh, I don't know when ever you're going to be here, but even if you have to come to the mountain, we'll yes. come. Well, we'll do like a proper relationship talk and talk about all these things. Oh, man. Let, let me ask the prophetess. Why were you being so difficult? I wouldn't say I was being difficult, <laughs> but I believe that when God's hand is on you, some way, somehow, he preserves you from your own ignorance. That's right. And, you know, I, I developed very early my body. Yeah. And so I knew that I was praying for a lot of men. That's true. And so in God's own wisdom, I believe that he just preserved me. Mm. Additionally, I always say if we would have gotten married ahead of time, I think we would have been divorced. So mm. God had to literally prune us both because he was this big basketball star about to go to the nba you know he played with lebron james he's like a big deal and me i'm a fresh girl i think i'm all that and those two characters god would have just said this is not what it's supposed pride to be alone. yes yeah. pride alone <laughs> would have just taken us out so i believe god in his own wisdom he preserved and then also i mean i was a young girl it was cute. Enjoy life. <laughs> you like the attention. Yes. I like to feel that this yes. person is after me. This, yes. Let me take my time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She I always said it's the best place for every lady to yeah. be. Don't be yeah. desperate. Like, yeah. 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 And nice. I told him I wanted to be a nun. <laughs> she wanted to be a nun. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to be serious talking to her. She was serious. And she's like, well, I'm Were you in the Catholic Church? No. And, she like, <laughs> and then she says she's going to medical school, so she yeah. don't have okay. time for marriage. Yeah. So it was just a lot that she was throwing at me. And sometimes guys, we take things literal. That's right. And then, literal. <laughs> and then another girl came to the church that I was going to, so I okay. ended up, you know, proposing to her. But then it was not the right choice. It's yes. I'm yeah. doing this young lady's hair, and she's just telling me, like, you know, we have to marry right. We have to marry right. And I'm like, amen. And I'm just doing her hair. And she's like, man, I have one of my brothers. You know, he got into a relationship with a girl and he's so anointed, he's so good, so humble. It didn't work out and now it's like his life, we don't know, like, but we're praying and fasting. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I finished doing her hair. I laid on the couch because I was tired. I had went to work before that. And then I go on Facebook and I see that she had written under his status okay. on Facebook. So I asked her, how do you know this guy? And she was like, you remember the fasting that I'm telling you that we're doing? This is the guy that I'm doing it with. And I was like, what are you doing it for? And he was like, Charlie. She was like, oh, Charlie, this girl that he's like, it's his wife, but he doesn't know how to approach her again, all this. So I said, what is her name? So he, so she calls him and he was like, Akusia. Well, she had told me her name was Akusia. So I'm like, Akusia, what? Do you know her English name? And all of a sudden she calls and she asks him, who is the girl? And he says, Akusia, or he says my African name. Mm. And then she's like, what's her English name? Because he never had said it. And then she, he said, Leslie. And mm. me and her both started screaming on the phone. <laughs> and she even hung up on him. And I was like, you're fasting about me? I thought he's already married and stuff. And she was like, no, this is who I've been talking about. The marriage didn't work out, didn't even go through. It just, the relationship just broke. Yeah. And I was like, I have not seen or heard of him in ages. And she's like, well, we're fasting about you. So I was like, oh my <laughs> God. So that was. This is a beautiful story. Yeah. Now you talked about basketball. Yes. I know it is crazy in, in that athletic field. A lot of things go on. Mm. The money, the girls, fame. Yes. At, at what point did you get serious with God? Um, were you like, a Christian from day one? I think for me, growing up in Ghana, I, the Lord the Lord called me early. Oh, okay. At the age of 12, I received tongues. I, I started praying nice. in tongues. So that was, a, that was an investment. Those were part of, part of the investment that he said he invested in right, me. So right. uh, the foundation was very strong before I got to America. Because mm. if I didn't have that foundation in oh. Ghana, it would have been a different story. That's so right. when I got in, I was always very cautious. Mm more spiritual about things so was very careful about the lifestyle of athletes mm -hmm. and getting right. when you get to college and i always advise the young ones that go in there 
I said, you know what? America portray being an athlete like, oh, you have to have girls, yeah. have fun, sleep that's with right. many, many different. I said, no, that's the, that's the enemy's way of destroying your destiny. Mm. And so for me, uh, I was very careful mm. not to hand over my destiny to the devil in that way. And the Lord, all, the Lord has always been faithful and always been, you know, favored me in that area. Yeah. Always will warn me if I'm going on the wrong path. The Holy Spirit will tell me, no, this is not what you should be doing. So it helped me. The foundation that I had in Ghana, praying and knowing God that early, mm -hmm. helped me when I got there. Yeah. yeah. And, and prophetess, as you said, I mean, you were beautiful from day one. Mm -hmm. Growing up, how did you manage the guys around you? Because it's, it's a lot of pressure. You know, beautiful black lady out there. Every guy wants to have you. Well, you know, I would, I'm telling you, our story is a story of preservation. Mm. You know, before his mom died, the story goes that she really prayed that her children would become pastors. That's right. In God's own wisdom, my mom and my dad as well, too, they groomed me. They scared me a lot. Mm. You know, I didn't mm. even know I can hug somebody. That's okay. how much my father would scare me. Like, don't hug anybody, you'll get pregnant. So it was kind of like that. And so when I got to college, I did not have the urge to be having sex and doing all of that. And so I was tagged as a man eater because when you come near me, I will. And so everyone just knew like this one, you know. So even when I got married, <laughs> my college friends, the males, they are like, are you serious? Because you don't like anybody. You mm. don't you don't smile with anybody, you don't tolerate anything. They just thought I was so mean and aggressive. But I believe God had to do that with me. Even me myself. I'm like, why don't mm. I have a boyfriend? Why mm. don't mm. I have someone to even go to the movies with? Yeah. To the point that one day my sister came to me in school and she was like, Leslie, is there something you want to tell us? And I'm like, what? And she's like, are you a lesbian? I'm like, no. I'm like, no, I'm not. And she's like, are you sure? Because you're not presenting any man. When we come here, I expect to see a man sneaking in or out. I don't see anything. Is everything okay? I'm like, everything is fine. It's just, I have not found anybody who I can, you know, and I have, I've loved the Lord from a young age. We went to go visit my aunt in Kumasi and she was even testifying. She was like, this is why you've always loved prayer, even as a small mm. child. Mm. So I really believe in the preservation prayers of parents. It's very important. Very important. Now I'm talking of parents, mm -hmm. your family size. I am not particularly surprised <laughs> because my, my mother gave back to seven of us. Oh, mm. wow. Seven, six okay. boys, I'm the only girl. Wow. So yes, I'm used to large family yeah. but for me as a mother of two <laughs> they are driving me crazy <laughs> and then i'm thinking six children yes. modern day yes. in america yes. how do you two do it because ministry i know takes a lot of mm. time yeah. it's funny i was just making a post yeah. about the disney that we went to. yeah mm. i think i think it's grace yeah i think god has grace us to do it and i come from a big family too okay my mom had eight. Oh, great and so six boys two girls oh my dad was older so he ended up having about 17 all together lord <laughs> and we grew up in the same the same home and had my mom's sisters also in the house so we grew up in a big family mm. um, so i don't see the burden of raising these children we do everything with them we we, we just go through the process with them now i don't i don't see that as a burden but you can yeah i believe it's grace it's a lot of work um, but I think we both made the decision to to live life with the kids. Mm. Many times when you have ministers, especially us being a younger couple, which we're not so young, we just look young, but us being a younger couple, we make sure that we open our ears mm. to hear a lot of what the pastor's kids say. Mm. And they're always like, you know, I had this life and then my parents had this life. That's right. So we have been extremely intentional mm. about, if I'm getting my makeup done, the kids are all around mm. there, running That's around the good. place. There's no such thing mm. as they're there and mm. we're here. Mm. Additionally too, we make sure that, like we, we intentionally live life with them. In the mornings mm. it's hectic. Everyone is brushing their teeth, taking showers, putting on their clothes. He's putting on shoes. I'm doing this. We're taking everyone to school. Like. 
we do we just we want to make sure we mesh everything mm. and so the kids have an understanding of what ministry mm. is mm. and they don't feel neglected because yeah. one of the biggest things that most pastors children have is the neglect right. so we figure if we're counseling somebody and you're there at least you can't say mommy and daddy were somewhere yes. else they're mm. there with us we're very present but on the flip side is a lot of work I can imagine from, from, from where I sit, anytime I look at you two, I always think, oh, they might have, they have a lot of money. They have helpers all <laughs> over the place. Probably they have a personal chef, someone to take care of the children. Yeah. So maybe they take We are the chef. <laughs> we are the, the, the diaper people. Yes. But my grand, oh. my mom is there yes. too. Okay. So my mom has been the biggest, even right now, the kids are with her. And nice. my siblings are a blessing. Some of the church members come and oh, they help. You know, some of them live with us. But primarily, we make sure that no one can ever say they took care of our kids. Mm. That's a goal of mine, to wow. make sure no one can say they took care of my kids. Great. That, so that, very that is fantastic. Yeah. It's, uh, it's awesome to know because a lot of pastors' children are very bitter. Yeah. Oh, yes. They actually hate the word church because yeah. church took mm -hmm. their parents away from yeah. us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what I you mean, were doing for me, is, I think, is great. Uh, yeah. When we had our third born, we had to make a decision. Mm. Uh, we were, because having two, you take one, I take one. When the third <laughs> one came in, I realized at the end it was a challenge. Mm. And I had to figure out, and we were also coming up in ministry, mm. had to figure out how to do the ministry for me per se, how to be able to prepare messages throughout the week and still be a father mm. and be a husband. So the Lord literally graced me because I, I thought that I was becoming the problem because sometimes mm. I need to sec, you know, seclude myself That's right. and go and prepare. But then I realized that the Lord gave me the grace to be able to do it while I'm still doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm. So even what I'm saying with them, I'm actually still thinking about messages so that they don't feel like daddy is out. Mm -hmm. you know? So I try to be around them and still be able to still preach on Sunday, preach on Friday if I have to, uh, but still be a father. Yeah, right. and I want to briefly share a story. Maybe mm. it'll bless someone. That's right. Um, you know, we are far from perfect. I was just telling someone that we just have learned how to manage one another. Jesus mm. learned how to manage everyone that was mm. around. He knew his Peters. He knew his Judases. He knew his Thomases. He knew how to manage people. And I believe one of the primary things is learning how to manage people. Mm. Like he said, when we had our third child that is when destruction thought it was going to hit mm. but we're two spiritual people and so what happened was now the third child is with me I have both of them the ministry is growing and it was 31st night it was 31st night into the first yes. and that was like a three-day weekend so we have fire night which is Fridays and yeah. we had Saturday then we have a Monday or Sunday, Sunday was service. New Year yes. so it was like back to back so I was just feeling so neglected because he had to now prepare back to back to back. Mm. The people were coming in and that particular 31st night, we wanted to wash feet because mm. that was the instruction of the Lord, <laughs> yeah. wash their feet. And so I just got so angry between hormones, between him not mm. being there, between the kids pulling on me. I'm a new mom. I have three under three now. It was just so much. And so I just got so upset and I'm like, you know what? If you can't help me, I'm leaving. And I said, I'm leaving this marriage. <laughs> and I just got so upset. And I can tell he was overwhelmed. So he took my older son. He went to church. And I can even tell in the preaching that it was not going well oh, because mm. it was just so much. Me, he ended up calling my mom. And my mom called me and she's like, Mama, you cannot let the enemy win you have to go to church and i'm like no i started packing my bags i'm like i'm going to actually <laughs> started packing my bags i'm like i'm going to a hotel i'm done with this i cannot this is just too much for me just too much. but then the lord spoke through my mom and this is the importance of having and being submitted mm. my mom said mommy don't let the holy um, don't let the enemy win let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Yeah. And in that moment, I just heard God's voice and I just ended up taking the baby and me and we went to church and I immediately let someone hold the baby and I went next to him and we started washing feet together. And that day there was hundreds, oh, almost thousands of people, was it was packed. So if I would have let the enemy enter, that would have been the end of the, the ministry growing right. and even my marriage. So we learned that, no, we have to learn how to live with these yeah. kids. Otherwise, it's a done deal. Now, let's zoom into KFT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kingdom Full oh, Tabernacle. Wow, an interesting name. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. 
the ministry started before you met or you came together to build it? Came so together. we came together to okay. build it. Um, okay. It was before we got married, we actually we were both in ministry. She was in Buffalo doing ministry. I was in the Bronx doing ministry. And the moment the Lord brought us back together, um, got engaged, we got married within the, the same May. So February got engaged, that visitation that I was talking about, February yeah. got engaged, May got traditional marriage, and then September we got white wedding. And mm. then we stepped into 2016, and that's where everything started. I was ordained uh, by God's grace in my, on my birthday in that, that year. And then one day we were praying. I think we were praying even before the ordination. We were praying. I was praying with my wife yeah. about the marriage. You know, we were getting ready. So mm. while we were praying, and she's very prophetic because even before that, she would sometimes call me and say, well, I can see your wife. Her name is going to be Akosia. And she didn't even know that she was talking about herself. <laughs> herself. <laughs> and she would have the gift of healing. I was like, so this girl, does she really like me? <laughs> So this is a confusion that I dealt with, right? <laughs> so we were praying and then one day she looked at me. Well, after we finished prayer, well, I saw your church name. Then she talked to me like, <laughs> I see Kingdom 4. I said, what? That kingdom means. what? Like you say, it's an interesting Yeah. Thing. At that time, I didn't see. I'm like, Kingdom 4. I was like, ah, we have Action Chapel. Exactly. We have Royal House. We have parents. <laughs> we have parents. <laughs> 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 oh, God, 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 kingdom 4. <laughs> <like, "What>? <laughs> So those, I mean, those days, we didn't, we didn't have any idea we were going to do any ministry. We mm -hmm. just want to help the ministry that we were at. And then uh, around July, when the Lord literally started shaking things up mm. and was calling us out of that place. And then that is when the vision came for me, right? So I said, oh, now the Holy Spirit literally opened my eyes to see that name. Oh. And I said, wow, kingdom food. Because all my life, before we got married, the Lord was also preparing me with kingdom mm. messages. Mm. My life was about kingdom. So it made sense. That I said, sense. oh, manifesting the kingdom of God on earth. Mm. That's kingdom full. We are full of kingdom. And that was it. it now I, I was like, babe, now I see the name now. <laughs> a you year know. later. Definitely <laughs> God will definitely have to confirm it. Yeah. You know, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. When he gives mm -hmm. a word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was, it was, that's how the name came. It was mm. through us praying and the Lord released it. But it took us a year for, for us to see, for me to see the vision, to agree with the name. And then once that happened, we sat down and said, okay, we need another thing to attach to it. We mm. prayed about it and we came up and said, well, Kingdom for Tabernacle, because okay. we didn't want Kingdom for Church mm. to become KFC. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So we want Kingdom for Tabernacle. Okay. And that's how the name came about. And the Lord was doing a quick work. And yeah. I'll let her give you more of the details of that. But through that is when we started.